everyone and welcome back to the channel. I want to ask you to please remember to like and share these videos if you enjoy what I do and so others can also find them and also please remember to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that little notification bell so you can be notified of my next uploaded videos. Have you ever thought about what you would do if you were faced with death and had to fight for your life? Would you stand tall and defend yourself, or would you freeze in fear? Well, this is the story of someone who stood tall, fought for his life, and made history. His name is William Henry Johnson, also known as Henry Johnson and he was born in Winston-Salem, North Carolina on July 15, 1892. He moved to Albany, New York in his early teens and worked a few small jobs, one of which was working as a red cap porter at the Albany Union Station on Broadway. On June 5, 1917, Henry enlisted in the United States Armed Forces just two months after the U.S. entered World War I, and he joined the all-black New York National Guard 15th Infantry Regiment. The 15th Infantry was redesignated as the 369th Infantry, and they were based in Harlem, New York. The unit was eventually sent to France. They arrived on December 27, 1917, and they joined the 185th Infantry Brigade. But upon arrival to France, his unit was relegated to labor services duties instead of combat training. They were ordered to unload ships and dig latrines. The black regiments suffered a lot of harassment from white U.S. soldiers, and they were even belittled by the AEF headquarters. Now, the AEF was the American Expeditionary Forces, and they went as far as to send out the now infamous pamphlet titled Secret Information Concerning Black American Troops. This pamphlet, quote-unquote, warned French civilians and military of the inferior nature and supposed tendencies of African American troops to commit sexual assaults. The white U.S. soldiers refused to fight alongside their black troops. Because of this, General John J. Pershing, who was the commander-in-chief of the American Expeditionary Forces on the Western Front, loaned the 369th to the 161st Division of the French Army. The French Army did not mind this at all, because they were desperate and in need of more men and they were happy to have the reinforcements. The French army assigned the 369th to Outpost 20 in the Champagne region of France on the edge of the Argonne Forest. They were equipped with rifles and helmets. On the night of May 14, 1918, Henry Johnson who was only 26 years old at the time and stood 5 feet 4 inches tall and weighed 130 pounds, was put on sentry duty with Private Needham Roberts, who himself was just a mere 17 years old. They were on duty from midnight to 4 a.m., or at least they were supposed to be. Now, Johnson and Roberts weren't on duty long, when German snipers began to fire at them around 2 a.m. Upon hearing the shots, Johnson and Roberts lined up a box of grenades in their dugout. Though it was dark, Johnson could hear the Germans cutting the perimeter fence. He told Roberts to run back to camp quickly to alert the troops. But then the first enemy gra grenade landed in their position. Johnson himself then hurled a grenade 
toward the fence, which in turn brought a hail of gunfire from the Germans, as well as more enemy grenades. Roberts decided to go back to help Johnson fight, but he was hit with a grenade and wounded in his arm and hip and was unable to do any fighting. So Johnson had Roberts lie in the trench and hand him grenades. So the two men were now battling for their lives with an enemy patrol of 20 to 24 troops who were determined to eliminate the outpost and bring prisoners back so that they could learn more about the all-black American force. Now Johnson threw grenades at the Germans until he ran out of grenades. He then started firing his rifle. He took German bullets to the head and lip as he fired his rifle into the darkness. He then took more bullets, some in his side and then in his hand as well. But Johnson kept firing as German troops began to bear down on them from all directions. Now the rifle that Johnson was using was called the LaBelle rifle and it only carries a clip of three cartridges. So he would have to reload after three shots. Now at some point there was a German bearing down on him and as he was prepared to fire, his rifle was almost muzzle to breast of the German, but he fired and laid that German to rest. And as he fell, his comrade jumped over his body with pistol in hand, wanting to avenge his friend's death. Johnson reloaded his rifle, but he shoved an American cartridge clip into his French rifle and it jammed. So Johnson swung his rifle around his head and struck a mighty blow upon the head of the German. The German went down crying, and in perfect Bowerly English, he said, and I quote, The little black blank has got me. At this point, the Germans were on top of Johnson and Needham, but Johnson kept swinging his rifle like a club and he kept them at bay until the stock of his rifle was splintered. Johnson then went down with the blow to his head. It is at this point that he noticed two Germans lift up Roberts to carry him off towards German lines. So Johnson sprang up and he unsheathed his bolo knife. This was the only weapon he had left. So he charged the Germans, hacking away. As his knees landed on the shoulders of the German, the blade of his knife was buried to the hilt through the crown of the German's head. And as he turned to face the rest of the German patrol, he was struck by a bullet from an automatic pistol. But he continued to lunge forward, slashing and stabbing the enemy. He stabbed one in the stomach. He killed a lieutenant, and he took a shot to his arm before driving his knife between the ribs of a, show, of a soldier who had actually climbed on his back. Now Johnson managed to drag Roberts away from the Germans and pull him back to safety. Johnson's ferocity and his determination overwhelmed the Germans and they began to panic and then suddenly in the distance they could hear French and American troops so the Germans ran back into the night and disappeared once reinforcements arrived Johnson passed out and was taken to a field hospital as daylight approached the carnage was able to be seen Johnson had killed four Germans and wounded upwards of 20 or more. He suffered 21 wounds in this hand-to-hand -hand combat that he found himself in. But he essentially prevented the Germans from busting through the French line. Now the Germans abandoned a lot of equipment when they escaped. They left behind firearms, including automatic pistols. 
And after this battle, Henry Johnson became known as the Black Death. And in an interview, Johnson said of this event, and I quote, There wasn't anything so fine about it. Just fought for my life. A rabbit would have done that. And he also stated, and I quote, Each slash meant something. Believe me, I wasn't doing exercises. Let me tell you. The 161st Division of the French recognized Johnson and Roberts, and they both received the French Croix de Guerre, which is France's highest military honors. And Henry Johnson's medal also included the gold palm for extraordinary valor. President Roosevelt called Johnson one of the five bravest Americans to serve in World War I. Both men returned home as war heroes. But it wasn't just Johnson and Needham. You see, the 369th was one of the first units to arrive in France. And although they were an all-black unit, they were commanded mostly by white officers. And they received the nickname the Harlem Hellfighters because of just how hard they fought, how brave they were, and how many battles they won. They were among the most highly decorated units when they returned back to the U.S. And in fact, on February of 1919, the Harlem Hellfighters returned home. They returned home to a parade up Fifth Avenue. Henry had been promoted to sergeant and he stood in the lead car. The crowd shouted, I quote, Oh, you black death. After his discharge, the army used Johnson's likeness and image to recruit new soldiers and to sell victory war stamps. Johnson had suffered extensive injuries from his hand-to-hand -hand combat with the Germans, and upon his arrival home, this prevented him from being able to really return to any kind of normal life. It was difficult for him to find work as well. Henry Johnson died July 1, 1929, at the age of 36 in Washington, D.C., he died of myocarditis, and he was buried at Arlington Cemetery on July 6, 1929. Posthumously, he was awarded the Purple Heart in June 1996. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross in February of 2003. And he was awarded the Medal of Honor on May 14, 2015 by President Barack Obama. His medal was accepted by Command Sergeant Major Lewis Wilson of New York National Guards. Like many black soldiers and units returning home from the war, they did not receive the recognition that they deserved at the time. They did not receive the financial promises that the government made to their veterans. Henry Johnson, in fact, did not receive a lot of financial assistance from the armed forces due to his extensive injuries, which he was actually entitled to. He received a little, but not enough to survive. So when he died, he died destitute. And all of his awards, unfortunately, like many others, came many, many years later. But... One thing that I can say, William Henry Johnson may not have been a large man, but he had a gigantic presence over his German enemies, and he became known to all as the Black Death. Well, guys, that's it for today's video, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch and listen. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.